Hey team, welcome back to Bordeaux part two, the long awaited, much anticipated second part of our look into Bordeaux. Um, okay, I'm gonna jump right into it so that this isn't too long of a class. Um, we have a lot to cover here, but don't freak out. We're gonna get there. I want to take perhaps a different approach to Bordeaux than a lot of different classes or book chapters you might have seen about it. I want to take a more practical approach, practical Percival, it's what I do best, and talk about the wines that we see the most of in Bordeaux. So if we think about it like a pyramid with, you know, bulk and entry level Bordeaux wines down here and the super premium blue chip wines up here, um, we're going to start down here. And the reason being, that's what we see the most of. That's what we sell the most of. That's what's on most wine shop shelves. That's what is on most by the glass list because they're affordable. And I want to teach you to be able to decipher and pick the best value and also what information that label has to offer us so that we can sort of decipher them. So that if you're looking at the wine, you can read some of those things and understand what they mean. So I'm going to jump right into it here and start sharing. You know, I love a map. Um, there we go. We're going to start with Bordeaux. This is the region, as you can see up here. Oh, also shout out to Wine Folly. You know, I love their maps. Uh, they have such great, clear information. Uh, so feel free to reference that for more specifics. But we see uh, the, re the whole entirety of France here. And then in the lower left, we should already know this by now from part one, that's the region of Bordeaux. Right smack in the middle there, this white dot, that's the city of Bordeaux, which is a rather large city, so it's quite metropolitan there. Um, <clears throat> quick overview, we have the Medoc, known as the left bank. Reminder, as we're looking at it, it's the left bank of this river system here. A little bit south, the continuation, we have Grave and Pesac Lyonian, that's the um, orange section here. Then we have the yellow section here, that's where we're going to get the majority of our sweet wines of high quality, like our Sauterne, which I touched on. Then we have Entre deux mers, which means between two seas or between two tides, because remember, these are river systems that will be affected by the tides of the Atlantic. Um, and this is where most of the production for white wine is going to come from in Bordeaux. Then we have the Libonet, and that's the right bank specifically. Now you're like, well, what's all this up here? Still the right bank, um, but just more general wines coming from here. You're not going to see as much super premium wine, but you're going to see a lot of production from uh, this er area in general. And so that's what I'm going to jump right into here. <clears throat> The biggest appellation from this area is just Bordeaux AOC. Um, that's it. Anything that any wine that's produced within this area that adheres to those regulations, uses the right grapes, the right techniques, can use Bordeaux AOC. It is the broadest appellation from this area. That means we can make Cremant de Bordeaux, so sparkling wine from Bordeaux. It can be any grape. We can make white wine, which, as we talked about, is Semillon, Sauvignon Blanc, Muscadel. That could be sweet or dry. So it could be sweet like our Sauternes or Cadillac or, um, or um, Berger, uh, Barsac. Um, we have rosé and claret. Claret is just a darker type of rosé. It's sort of a, think of it, it looks like a light red in the glass. Um, any of our red grapes that are allowable. We can also make um, obviously red wines. So as long as we use the right grapes, you're, you're good to go. Okay. If the bottle says Grand Vin de Bordeaux, it means that it's the winery's best wine. Okay, so that can be from anywhere in the Bordeaux region, but if it says Grand Vin de Bordeaux, it means that that winery says of the wines that we make, this is our very best one. Okay. So that's a good indicator. It's not controlled in any way. No one's saying this is the, you know, uh, legally the best wine, but, you know, the winery is saying this is the best one that we make. So that's helpful on a very general level. Um, the next thing you can see within this wider appellation is Bordeaux Superior. 
pretty clear, superior Bordeaux. All that means is that the grapes have achieved a minimum ripeness and the ripeness of a grape is indicated by its sugar level and therefore how much ultimate alcohol it's going to have in the end. So you can only use Bordeaux Superior for red wines and for sweet wines. Um, it's a definitely a mark of quality for both the region and the winery should they determine to use Bordeaux Superior on their bottle. So again, another easy way in the general area of Bordeaux to say, okay, this is going to be a pretty decent bottle and should be a step above just Bordeaux. Okay, I'm going to move on to our next map here. Now, this is the classifications. So as I was starting to touch on, the classifications mean what we can legally write on the bottle. Okay, and as I said, I'm starting from our more basic entry level wines. And now we're getting into the more specific classifications that a winery could use as an indicator of value. Okay, so we're getting a little bit higher up on our quality pyramid in terms of classifications. So here on our left bank, remember, if you see Cru Bourgeois, that's generally an indicator of quality. It could also say Cru Artisan. Now, I'm not going to talk yet about the 1855 Grand Cru Class A. I will talk about it at the end of the video, but just put a pin in that and I'll get to it in a little bit. Essentially, Cru Bourgeois was intended to capture all the wines of quality that um, didn't fit into this super high premium classification. So we're saying these are excellent wines. Um, they're created for quality and value. Now you can have Cru Bourgeois, you can have Cru Bourgeois Supérieur, and Cru Bourgeois Exceptionnel. I don't, exceptionnel, I can say that better. Um, don't sweat it too hard. I just want you to understand that if you see a bottle from Bordeaux and it says Cru Bourgeois, it means it's from the left bank, okay? And we also know that it probably has more Cabernet Sauvignon Blanc and uh, Cab wow, Cabernet Sauvignon Blanc, Woo! Okay, Cabernet Sauvignon, it has more of that in proportion to Merlot and Cabernet Franc and the other possible red grapes, okay? So here we're, we're using our detective skills by looking at the label to figure out what's in the bottle. So great value wines with that labeling. As we move down to this green area here, as I mentioned before, that's Cru Classé de Grave, okay? So this wide area, that's an indicator of quality. That means that the grapes are going to come from here. Um, and I, you know, if a winery chooses to use that on their ticket, it usually means that they've made a wine of quality and they want you to know that it comes from this area. What's interesting here is, as I said, we get more white wines after the river fork. And so this classification can encompass both white and red wines. Uh, that's not the case throughout this entire region of Bordeaux. So that's an interesting one. So you know if you see a white bottle that says Cru Classé de Grave, it's a white wine, you know it's probably of good quality. All right, this is going to get a little bit more intense. Don't panic. I promise it's going to be fine. I don't expect you to memorize this. I will pull out the key pieces of information that I think uh, are the most helpful, okay? So don't panic when I show you this next one. We're going to move up to the right bank here, I'm indicating, and we're gonna go a little bit closer in. Okay, I know, it's a lot, don't worry about it. Don't freak out. The right bank is known as the Libourne, okay? And these are all the little appellations inside of it. The only Grand Cru here is going to be in the area of Saint-Emilion, okay? We know that over here, we're going to have the higher proportion of Merlot with Cabernet Franc blended in, okay? The most famous here is going to be from Pomerol and of course from Saint-Emilion. Super great values will be, okay, if it just says Saint-Emilion Grand Cru, Great value, you can get bottles for $30, $40 at retail, um, definitely under $100 on a wine list by far. Uh, delicious wines, easy to drink, probably not meant for very long aging, but 
pretty good value wines here. Okay, there is more specific appellation designations. And as I was working on this class, I was getting a headache trying to remember all this information and distill it for you. So don't freak out. Um, there is Saint-Emilion Grand Cru Classé, and then there's Saint-Emilion <laughs> Premier Grand Cru Classé A and B or A et B. Don't worry about that. Again, now we're getting to that tippy top of that pyramid, okay? So if you see that on the label, Premier Grand Cru <laughs> Classé, you're talking about pretty blue chip wines, okay? These are going to be very expensive. Um, I'm talking hundreds of dollars, if not thousands. Uh, these wines are meant to age. And the reason I approached this class this way is because, believe me, when you come across those wines, they're going to be very expensive, whether it's at a wine shop or it's on the wine list that you're working with. So um, yes, you should learn about those wines if you hope to sell a $500 bottle to a guest, for sure. However, you know, these are unicorn wines. They're they're not going to cross your path super often. What I'm far more concerned about is, let's say, um, a Lalande de Pomerol or a Canon Francac or a Francac, because these are the bottles that you're going to see on a wine list or a buy the glass list for $16, $17, $18, $19. $19. These are the ones that we're going to encounter far more frequently. So does it mean it's a great wine? No. But does it mean that it doesn't just come from Bordeaux? Yes. Okay. So that's pretty cool. We know it's right bank. It has more specificity of place and terroir. Okay. We're going to work our way back around the horn clockwise. Okay. And remember now we're, I'm, I'm, I'm narrowing in on the upper piece of the pyramid here. Entre deux mer. Don't sweat this too much. I just want to reiterate that we see uh, red, white, and sweet wine, and of course, sparkling wine coming from this larger area, sandy soil, uh, more workhorse wines, except for this strip here, which is where our sauterne is going to come from. These are super premium uh, sweet wines, highly sought after uh, and expensive, as I mentioned the last time. So don't panic too much about that. I just want you to have a sense that this is where our sweet wine is coming from. And just to reiterate again, also along the river here, because we need that humidity so that we get grapes that are infected with botrytis, so that we get that noble rot that causes that, you know, beautiful and unique flavor profile from the sweet wines. I'm moving on from that. I don't want to spend too much time on it. That's another class in Tyler. Okay. So now here we are in Grave Supérieure and Grave and Pessac Lyonian. I do want you to remember these two because we are going to see some high quality wines from this area. If you see Grave on the label, you know that it's from here, probably has more Cabernet Sauvignon in it uh, and Pessac Lyonian. And I think this is probably a good time to mention and start to get into this 1855 classification. Uh, this area here in Grave, there is one winery and only one that was classified in 1855 as being the, one, of, one of the best wines in all of Bordeaux, and that is um, Aubryon. I don't expect you to remember that. You might have heard the name before. It is a winery that is still in production. Um, just know that Generally speaking, Grave makes pretty good Bordeaux, but they have one really famous and classified top-notch uh, winery in that system. I'll get more into that in just a second. Oh, let me move my window. Okay, here we go. Now, all the way back around to 12 o'clock, we're in the Medoc, the left bank, where we know there's higher proportion of Cabernet Sauvignon. Okay. And again, more specifically, these are our appellations within the Medoc, okay? So you can read, I'm not gonna go through all of them. I will highlight a few of them that you should have seen or been familiar with on our wine list and wine lists you work with. We have Margot, Saint-Julien, we have Poyac, saint Estef, um, the Haut Medoc, the Medoc. These are um, very famous appellations that have within them very famous wineries. 
And finally, I will address the 1855 issue. In 1855, or right before that, Napoleon III says for the Grand Exposition in Paris, he wants to display all the finest Bordeaux has to offer, all the best wines. And so he goes to the brokers, essentially the merchants, and a lot of them English, <laughs> um, because Britain is the biggest market for these wines, and says, what are the best ones? So the price that they command um, in their reputation is what they use as an in uh, an indicator of the quality of the wines. All of them are from this left bank area, as I said, with the exception of Chateau Aubryon, which is down here in Grave. So obviously, it's if you look at the system now, it seems like, well, there's a lot of super high quality coming from other areas in Bordeaux, but this system and classification is still in use today. So these are the wines that command the highest prices. These are the ones that go to auctions for thousands and thousands of dollars and make the news. Um, these are the ones that go to Sotheby's. So when, when wine makes the news, it's usually because of these guys. Um, and they are meant to age. So unlike these broader uh, category of Bordeaux that I'm talking about, these are the wines you lay down. These are the wines that people buy cases of uh, in order to use them as an investment, okay? I don't want to say don't worry about these wines, but I want to say these in the, your life as a salesperson and as a um, a server or bartender or a som, these are going to generally come across your desk less frequently. So you should know about them, but I think it's far more useful to understand um, the the bigger part of the Bordeaux production and be able to pick the best wines within that and the best values. So um, this system is also the system that determines when they're called first growth, second growth, third growth, fourth growth, and fifth growth. So they actually ranked the producers into these this tier of five that still persists today. It is almost never that any a winery can move up or down in that system. The last time it happened was, I think, 1973. It never happens. So is it an antiquated system? Yes. Are a lot of the wineries still producing and still producing high quality wines? Also, yes. I don't know. You can make up your own mind about that. I don't want you to confuse growths with second label, third label, whatever. When we talk about that, you might have heard that, or if you are a wine buyer, a wine rep may say to you, oh, this is the second label from such and such. What that means is a very well-known winery has uh, a lot of land. They put their super premium grapes and their most effort into their best label, but they don't want to dilute the brand uh, with the rest of the grapes. And so they create a second label and again, these can be, this is good information to know because you get the winemaking and the expertise of the winery at a lesser price. So they don't want to use the same labeling. They create a secondary label name and that's your second or uh, third label. Um, okay, uh, I hope that's helpful. I know it was a lot of information. As you know, I'm going to make uh, an information sheet for you that will go through in the same order that I discussed this with the information that I hope that you will retain. Uh, again, the Wine Folly website on Bordeaux is awesome for going more in depth with this, but I hope I broke this down in a way that makes it more accessible and will help you read a label. I'm also going to show you a label, so I'm gonna hit pause here and I'll resume in just a second. And she's back. Okay, kids. So I have here one of those let me see if you can see it on the bottle. Hmm, maybe on the back here. It might be that damn light. Okay. Tiny, tiny, tiny. It says Cru Classe en 1855. I'm not going to test my French here. This is <clears throat> Chateau Lioville Barton. Lioville Barton. My French is crappy today. Maybe every day. Um, this is a second growth, okay? So of the five rankings of wineries, this one was ranked as a second growth. 
Okay, this is a 2006. And you see here it says Saint Julien. Okay, well, looking at the map share that I'm doing with you here, we know Saint Julien is here on the left bank. So we know that it must have more Cabernet Sauvignon in the blend. Obviously, we have the vintage is 2006. So we can already, just from this really simple label, tell quite a bit about this wine. Okay, I think that's kind of neat. Um, this is a pricey bottle for sure. I was just talking about this is like, you know, one of the fancier bottles, but you can get this at under retail at retail for mm, probably about a hundred dollars. Um, depending on the restaurant, that would probably be at least mm, two or more on a wine list if we're talking markups. Um, but just to give you a little bit of context, uh, these things are on the market. You will see them on wine lists. Um, actually, this one's probably, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't buy this bottle, but <laughs> just for reference, I want you to have a sense that you can be a detective with these labels and figure out this information just by looking at it and then be able to convey it to your customers uh, with some ease. So, oh, what else did I want to say? I think that's about it. Oh, I did have one caveat. Of course I have a caveat. I always do. There are, just like every region, some producers who do not want to play the game. They're like, we do what we do. We'll use the labeling in as much as it helps us or we care about it. Otherwise, we think that our wines stand on their own and we don't want to play the game. Uh, one such example that I think is a very good one is Chateau Le Puy. Uh, they are in um, Côte de Franc in the Libourne. Let me see if I can find that. Yep, here we go. Where, yeah, Franc in Côte de Bordeaux in Franc. So they're in um, this region here. It is obviously more and more low. They make very high quality premium natural Bordeaux, low intervention. The winery has been around since 1610 and it's been in the family for like 15 generations. Uh, they make incredible wine meant for aging. Uh, but if you see it on a wine list, it's just going to say Bordeaux, uh, Bordeaux AOC, because they don't claim any other uh, more specific appellation within there. Uh, so again, there are exceptions, but uh, I think that it's far more important to be able to read these in the day to day and uh, be able to pick out the best value for yourself and uh, for your customers. I hope that's helpful. Be ready for a quiz. And um, that's it. Good luck.